Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were in the module of magnetics design and today we will look into inductor design. The main steps of inductor design are first uh, we choose the material, the magnetic core material selection and this uh, we have discussed uh, in length. So, it depends on many things like what is the frequency of operation, how much is the saturation flux density that is required, how much is the permeability and uh, several other factors. So, depending on that uh, we first choose the magnetic material. Now, once you have chosen the magnetic material, let us say you choose uh, ferrite. So, then uh, with that you will also have an idea of uh, what is going to be the magnetic flux density or the saturation flux density. And uh, um, so, you will also be having some idea of the permeability, the range of permeability and the frequency up till which you can use that material once you have chosen it. So, based on uh, what you need, you choose the material once you have chosen, certain parameters are known to you for your inductor design. Then next is uh, the core shape and size selection. So, um, as this also we discussed it that there are many different shapes and sizes of cores which are available and uh, uh, there is no fixed choice which is the one that you need. So, depending on uh, your power rating and uh, the size of your inductance uh, based on it you, many times you may have an idea of which type of core shape and size may be suitable. Uh, but uh, uh, looking at the charts, the different tables that are provided by manufacturers and doing calculations also you can choose your core shape and then of course the size of for that particular shape. So, basically your inductor designing will involve the core and uh, then you have to wind some wires, some conductors on it and uh, it will be having some specific number of turns. So, you will have to decide what are the number of turns n that is required and you also need to choose the wire size. This also we have discussed before that uh, wires are available in various size. So, what should be the gauge of the wire which you need for your inductor design is something you will be choosing. And the further gap selection, air gap selection, if you need an air gap for uh, your particular magnetic design, then you may also decide the size of that or rather the length of that air gap. So, let us uh, go further on uh, your magnetics design and uh, uh, for uh, designing magnetics one important thing that you should be knowing is the window utilization factor. Now, what is this uh, window utilization factor? So, uh, this part uh, this opening in your core uh, or uh, the free space in the core is called as the window. So, uh, this part is your this uh, free part is called as the window and uh, we wind conductors uh, through these window. So, now uh, the way the uh, wires are going to be placed uh, let us say it is a solid wire solid round wire which is going to be the case most of the time. So, then now uh, when you place them uh, what you see is that you can place it in this manner where uh, you can see that uh, that these are two conductors placed side by side and in between there is another conductor and uh, then like that there is one conductor over here placed like this. So, this is kind of a triangular or you can say a hexagonal pattern in which the conductors may be packed inside the window. Now, uh, we all want uh, magnetics to be as small in size as possible. So, therefore, we would like to utilize this uh, window area to the fullest. So, that means we would like to fill this uh, uh, to the maximum extent as possible. 
but uh, then these are solid wires and if you have a rectangular uh, frame like this then obviously you cannot uh, fill the entire area because in between also you can see here that there will be some gaps over here which will be left out or uh, uh, now this is one hexagonal pattern there could be another pattern which could be like square pattern you can place the conductors in this way exactly one on top of each other in that case also you, you can see that there will be gaps in between and so those areas uh, cannot be filled by the conductor so that area is you can see it's that area is wasted. So, this is more tight packing as compared to this uh, square pattern. Now, irrespective of which pattern you use, uh, the thing that you have to note down is that, that you cannot fill the entire area because you have a round conductor and so when you place it obviously some of the space is going to be unutilized. Apart from that further you will have the insulation of that conductor. So, this is the conductor inside. So, further outside area you will have the insulation. So, this red part is your insulation. So, again that insulation is uh, not contributing to the actual uh, making of the inductor I mean achieving that inductance value. So, then that is again can be considered as a space which is unutilized because of the insulation of the conductors because mostly we will not be using bare conductors we may be using um, insulated conductors. So, that insulation whatever is its um, diameter that will also lead to some unutilization of the window area. Apart from that uh, uh, I had also shown you bobbins uh, previously. So, if uh, this is your uh, this is the window area of the core. So, then we have seen this before that here on the top of it you will be placing a bobbin. So, that bobbin will also take some space so, this is your uh, bobbin I am just showing one part of it. So, that bobbin will also take some space and so that space is also going not going to be utilized. Further at the edges at this edge corners also we cannot fill it up and so that will also lead to some unutilization of the window area. So, um, so, what we can say is that so there are different factors your uh, wire insulation, then your uh, fill factor means you cannot really fill it completely because of the round wires and uh, then your bobbin further your edge factors you cannot fill it at the edges. So, like that like these four there may be uh, other factors as well. So, because of it some of the window is not utilized. So, this uh, factor is uh, um, uh, called as the window utilization factor that how much of the window area is actually we will be able to utilize for your making of the magnetics. And so, this is uh, represented as by the symbol Ku and uh, most of the time uh, it is this value is taken between 0.4 to your 0 0.5. 0 0.4 is a very very good choice a very common choice for, uh, for your window utilization factor that means 40 percent of the available window area is what uh, which we can actually use for your magnetics design. Next uh, let us discuss one of the very commonly used methods for your magnetics design which is called as the area product method. It is a very very popular uh, method. So, uh, in this uh, uh, what uh, we do is that we 
we do a product of this window area W A, this window area is uh, represented as W A and this cross sectional area A C. So, this is your cross sectional area of the core. So, this that cross sectional area A C which is multiplied by the window area. So, area product is defined as A P is a multiplication of W A and A C. So, now your flux linkage, the peak flux linkage lambda p k could be written as L into I L max, where L is the inductance that you need and I L max is, uh, is the maximum uh, average inductor current for which the inductor has to be designed. So, this uh, we can write it as uh, n times phi p k the peak flux and which you know that can be written as n a c b p k a c is the cross sectional area of the cope. Further your a w which is the cross sectional area of the conductor is going to be equal to i l max by your j m. Now, A w is the cross sectional area of conductor, J m is the current density, the maximum current density. So, further what we can write is n the number of turns can be written as equal to k u w a by a w. Now, from where are we getting this? Now, suppose this is your uh, window area w a. Now, we know that that only a part of it can be actually filled. Uh, because of this uh, different different factors that are involved. So, uh, so we have to so the available window area for uh, actual your uh, inductance making will be k u into w a and uh, this is the cross sectional area of the conductor a w. So, when we divide it k u w a by a w we will be obtaining how many number of turns n can be put inside the window area. Further the maximum energy stored in magnetic field this if we denote by w m this will be equal to half of l i l max square. This is the magnetic energy uh, the maximum magnetic energy that is going to be stored by that inductor. So, now further we can write l i l max is going to be equal to n a c b p k which can be written as equal to if we substitute for n k u w a by a w into a c b p k. Further we can substitute for a w that is the cross sectional area of the conductor. So, it will become k u w a a c b p k j m by i l max. So, from this what it implies is that l i l max square equal to k u w a a c 
BPK JM. Now, area product AP is equal to WA into AC. So, from this above equation, what it becomes that this is equal to L IL max square by KU JM BPK. Now, this is actually equal to twice of the magnetic energy. So, 2 Wm by Ku Jm Bpk. So, this is the equation for your area product. So, from this equation what you observe is that, that this term area product is inversely proportional to Jm that is your current density of the conductor and also inversely proportional to your peak value of flux density. And what we see is that this area product is directly proportional to the magnetic energy stored. So, this gives and that means this uh, area product term contains your current density term as well as your magnetic flux density, its peak value and it also contains the saturation, um, uh, I mean your magnetic stored energy, all these three are present in, in your area product term. So, this is the term which is uh, first calculated. And then uh, from the manufacturer's data sheets, we see what are the area products of, uh, of the cores that they are that they are manufacturing and from them then we choose a core which has got a area product close to what we have calculated. So, then uh, uh, when we previously saw your magnetic cores, we discussed as I showed you that uh, manufacturers they provide the area product for the core shape and size that they are manufacturing. Now, next uh, let us discuss the temperature rise in your magnetics design. Now, you know that whatever the losses that are taking place in uh, any magnetics which is basically the losses are because of your um, uh, copper loss and the uh, core loss. So, that is a loss and ultimately it has to get dissipated as heat. So, that heat is going to be going through the be dissipated or radiated through the surface area of the core. So, that is why um, your how much is the temperature rise of the magnetics that is calculated using the surface area of the um, of the core that is selected. So, let us look into what are the expression for your temperature rise. So, A T let us say is the heat radiating outer surface area for a particular core and uh, your PCW is the total core loss uh, which is the sum of the core loss and the copper loss your total power loss rather this is the total power loss. Now, we define a term which is called as the surface power loss density it is denoted by this symbol and given as P C W by A T and its unit will be in watt per meter square. So, your temperature rise corresponding to this loss P C W this is given as H A T into delta T. Now, H is some constant. Now, from where are we getting this equation? We will not uh, be discussing all this in this course. Just take it that this is how you can write it. This uh, loss is equal to H A T into delta T. 
So, you are at uh, 45 percent of conduction and your 55 percent radiation with emissivity this temperature rise delta T is given as equal to 40 psi 0.826 power of 0.826 this is the equation for calculation of your temperature rise. So, this equation is important uh, when you select a core you will be getting uh, the um, this outer surface area 80 this either will be provided by the manufacturer or uh, you can calculate it yourself using the dimensions of the core. Once you know 80 then um, you can calculate the surface power loss density based on your calculation of the total power loss and from there you can uh, estimate the temperature rise of your magnetics design. Now, this is very very important that you should calculate your temperature rise because if your temperature rise of your designs are too high then that will uh, lead to damage of the magnetic so it is not a proper design. So, we will have to redesign with a bigger core. So, that is why if, uh, when you design a magnetics you should be um, calculating this temperature rise to know that whether they are under limits or not. So, the key points of this lecture are that uh, there is one term which is window utilization factor in magnetics design. It is basically how much is the total area which is uh, how much of the total area is actually being utilized for your or rather contributing for your magnetics design. Then uh, the area product method is what we are discussing in this course for design of magnetics. There are other methods also, but uh, we have taken up this area product method. And uh, then um, uh, you should also have an estimate of your temperature rise and other important term associated with the temperature rise is your surface power loss density. Thank you.